So I'm back at the Wailua Forest Reserve on the island of Kauai, where we made our initial HBT application with a Mazapir targeting Australian tree fern. If you'll recall, we had a treatment design of a 1, 5, and 10 unit application targeting the apical growing point of this weed. And today we're going to look at some dramatic symptoms of the application. A healthy Australian tree fern has a full frond canopy and a few dominant fiddleheads at the apical growing point. The one unit application shows no discernible differences to the untreated control. Notice the dominant fiddleheads and the full canopy. This is a five unit application where we notice a thinner frond canopy and a proliferation of twisted fiddleheads. Or in this case, the frond to fiddlehead ratio is inverse to the untreated and one unit application. Similar to a five unit application, a 10 unit application shows a proliferation of twisted fiddleheads that never fully develop into mature fronds. So 240 days later, we see that the 10 unit application is our best treatment. Thus at 5% concentration, a 10 to 15 unit application should be a lethal dose when administered to the apical growing point of this Australian tree fern. So Jeff, it looks like 240 days after uh, treating the Amazapir HBT with Kahili ginger, uh, I'm actually pretty surprised at the efficacy that was administered here. Uh, what do you think? What's your take on this so far and your observations? Yeah, it looks like it's really dying and it looks better than it did, uh, you know, even just a couple months ago. Right, because you were here uh, back in October, I recall, and it didn't have this level of activity. So that tells me that there's some residual activity of this Amazapir where it's progressed at a, um, uh, at a much more advanced level of desiccation and necrosis. We still have some chlorosis in there, but I don't see any new regen suggesting that uh, we may have actually killed some of the rhizomes in the ground too. And compared to when we first administered this, we have a significant amount of, of bare ground being exposed where the foliar uh, canopy is dying back. Um, so again, representing the concept of HBT being able to target weed populations across this ravine that would otherwise be inaccessible. We just don't have any other ways of treating it. But also what I'm noticing is the precision of our application. Well, we said, okay, let's treat this triangular piece. And you can see where we had treated exactly where we said we would. And on either side of it, you can see on this left side where the Kahili ginger that was untreated is still really healthy. So being able to use discretion and precision in this application is another attribute, it looks like. Yeah, that's just right where we shot. Great. So here we see on the boundary where it was untreated, the Kahili ginger is healthy. As we move into the target area, the significant damage occurring within the patch where HBT was administered. Again, the active ingredient being Amazapir. We're more familiar with Escort or the Metsulfuron formulations being effective on this plant. But again, also it appears that Amazapir is just as effective. Here's the second application of HBT to Kahili ginger and we can see in the lower part of this frame how the application was quite effective. We can see in the upper part where we still have Kahili ginger that's surviving, though chlorotic suggesting that there is herbicidal activity. Uh, so it could be just a matter of a more concentrated application in that lower part. In an adjacent site where HBT was applied to Kahili ginger, we can see where the herbicide was very effective in its concentration and dose. Notice the close-up of this rhizome that shows no regeneration. Safety's off. So now we're back at the site where we administered HBT as a basal bark application to this strawberry guava. And so what we're noticing is that 240 days later, the tree is still surviving, which tells us that this application was ineffective. Here we see a closer look of the basal bark application where we see the cambium starting to heal around the wound. Now because the tree is still surviving, we suggest that the active ingredient is probably not the right choice for this weed target. 
but with the right herbicide, we still think basal bark applications would be effective with HBT.